And uh, if you have a Bible, which I hope you do have, 1 Chronicles 28 is where we're going to start today. And I wanted to talk this, this morning about taking off. And um, last week we were on a, Fiona and I were on a cruise, just us and 5,000 kids. And uh, <clears throat> so we, we decided to um, not take part in the shipboard activities because I'm not really into, you know, all of the stuff, <laughs> Dodge and cars and all the other stuff they had on there. Um, we retired to our little, little stateroom and tuned in to the service last week and Pastor Paul Kamek delivered a great message, did he not? Yes. And Paul, I want to thank you for that. But he talked about the seasons of life and I realised as I was listening that every season of life has its own opportunities and it has its own fruit. Some are more fruitful than others. And what he preached really rang true because Fiona and I, we're, we're in the autumn category. We're in kind of the tail end of the autumn category. That's a terrible thing to say. I can't... You know, I, I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I wonder who that old guy is looking back at me, you know, because I don't feel that old. But there are seasons in life. And uh, I realize that in any season, you have limited time to maximize your effect for God. Is that true? And I think 2023, let's start right now. Let's make this year the best year ever for doing things for the Lord, for serving the Lord. <clears throat> I believe the harvest is still plentiful and the workers are few. And I began to think about my life and about Lily House and about our church and about my own mortality. And if you look back through scripture, there's several guys who talk about their own mortality and, and they're thinking, well, what sort of a legacy am I going to leave? Uh, David, in the winter of his life, gave some advice to his son Solomon, who was in the summer of his life. In 1 Chronicles 28 verse 20, it says this, Then David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and courageous and do it do it long before nike even existed king david said just do it and then he put a tick under it like that because that's what he said be strong and courageous and just do it do not be <laughs> do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the lord your god even my god is with you now listen to what he says here he will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the Lord, house of the Lord is finished. He will not leave you or forsake you. He will see it through to the end for whatever he has for you. So we better maximize the time we have. I believe there is much more, more and still more that can be done in 2023 and beyond. We haven't arrived, folks. We're in our new auditorium here. Life Point's just lost there. But we haven't arrived. We've just sta started. We're just taking off. This is not the end point. This is the launch pad. So if you are after a comfortable church that maintains the status quo, you're probably in the wrong place. But if you want a church that is moving ahead, taking ground and taking off because it wants to bring its community to Jesus, then this is it. At least from our point of view, this is it. Uh, I read the story about Alfred Nobel. Who's heard of him? Alfred Nobel? Who's heard of the Nobel Peace Prize? This is the guy. Okay, this, listen to this story. Uh, when his brother died, Noble got a copy of the newspaper to see what was said about his brother. He was shocked to discover that the paper had confused him with his brother and was writing his own obituary. He read his own obituary in the newspaper and he wasn't even dead yet. And he was shocked with what he read. As a young man, Alfred Noble had been involved in the invention of dynamite. And his premature obituary elaborated on the terrible death and destruction and this powerful force had brought into the world. And Noble was absolutely devastated. He wanted to be known as a man of peace, not a man of destruction. So he quickly realised that he needed to write his own obituary by changing the way he was living his life, by changing the nature of his life. So Alfred Nobel did just that. Today, Alfred Nobel is better known for his contribution to peace than he is for anything else he did in his life, including the dynamite thing. Isn't that incredible? The Nobel Peace Prize was started by the guy who helped invent dynamite. But he's remembered for his peace because he changed, he read his own obituary prematurely and he changed. So the thing is, this morning, you can have a designer life. So it's not prosperity preaching. This is truth. You can have a designer life. Fiona and I were recently... Um, 
we had a holiday uh, last year to Italy and we were in Florence and Florence is the home of Gucci and Prada and all these sorts of things and I realized that that when you see a, like a like a, a handbag or shoes or something they're selling for thousands of dollars thousands of dollars for a handbag that's ridiculous but the people buy it. they buy it because it's, it's a designer thing you can get something that kind of looks the same on the street outside and down a bit for much much less but the quality's not there see when it's a designer product it's quality and you can have a designer life this life that you have is yours to design yourself you can waste it or you can make it all it can be whatever season you're in god gives us opportunities for a designer life but we must press in and trust him to use us so you can all it takes to have a designer life is, is to say lord i'm yours that's all it takes so now more than ever i think we need to think about that paul writes this in ephesians 5 look carefully then as to how you walk not as unwise but as wise making best use of the time because the days are evil are we agreed that our days are evil today I believe that uh, in 2023 the days are more evil than they have been for a long time but this is the year folks that we can take off this is the year that we can make a difference as a church as individuals as servants I mean think about the world after two years of enforced stagnation with COVID the shackles are off this year it's time for us to design the life we want to live by making the right choices and following the Lord so whatever season I believe that we can and indeed must be fully productive do I hear an amen to that it's time for us to take off and fly into what the Lord is preparing for us because and, and I love I was actually watching an eagle yesterday uh, from our house I saw it circling around and, and they're fantastic to watch aren't they and the thing I love about the eagle is they don't flap much have you noticed that they just set their wings and they ride the thermals and there's a great lesson for us in that because a lot of Christians flap a lot they really do they make a lot of song and dance and noise you know and I'm a Pentecostal you know that sort of stuff they make a lot of a lot of effort but a true eagle when an eagle flies he just spreads his wings and the Holy Spirit gets under those wings and lifts him up he doesn't it's not he's not doing all the work he's yielding to the Holy Spirit and I believe that's God's destiny for us. So it's time for us to take off. If you want to take hold of your life and really become someone in, in, in the Lord, then please listen up. I believe this is for you. So let me run through some points of how we can take off in our walk and our service for Jesus right now. So in short, here's my take on the takes we need to take if we are to take off in 2023. You can replay that online and see if I got it right. So there's a few takes here. Number one, take a moment with God. It all starts with you taking a moment or two to invest into God. Listen to me, you will never achieve anything for the Lord unless you take time to get to know Him. I don't care who you are or how talented you are, you have to get to know Him. That's why I'm encouraging you to read God's Word. That's why we have the Bible reading plan and we've had our app designers working on it and it now works on an Android. Yay! they forgot to put something in but so so you can if you have our, our our bible app which is free you can you can read the bible the passages every day without even leaving the app they're all there for you it is so easy for us but we get so busy doing so much stuff we say i have no time to read the bible but we have time to get on facebook we have time to watch tv we have time to do all that sort of stuff you know make the time if it's important make the time you will never amount to anything unless you put the word of God in you and unless you connect with God and God gives us this promise in James 4 draw near to God and he will draw near to you so if you make an effort to get closer to God I guarantee you that he will draw closer to you and life will look completely different when you're attuned to him when attempting to describe God in the past human beings have often I mean, think about it you talk to someone out in the street what's God like well they usually imagine an, an image of a hostile being that has to be appeased or uh, a disinterested deity who's is distant and uninvolved in our lives you know they say God is watching us from a distance sort of thing or they think he, he's, he's like a, a magical entity that we can manipulate 
through superstitious ritual. Well, God is none of these. Let me tell you who God is. He is the almighty creator of heaven and earth. And he loves and is interested in you. That's the great mystery to me. Why the creator of heaven and earth would take time to invest in me or in you. He wants a personal relationship. He wants to connect with his creation. You will seek him and find him, Jeremiah says. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The problem is, folks, let's be honest, we don't seek him with all our heart. We, you know, we'll give him Sunday. That's enough. Maybe Wednesday nights. Don't get too excited, God. That's all I've got to spare. I don't think so. I want to challenge you to take the moments with God. Take time every day to connect with God. And I promise you, your life will never be the same. I was looking back over my life while we were away because we had lots of time dodging kids. Um, and, and I was looking at my life and I realized there was a point in my life where I said, you know what, God, you're either real and I'm going for this or I'm walking away right now. That's so what I said. I said, God, if, if you're real, you'd better be. And I threw everything I had into getting to know God and I've never looked back. It was a moment in my life I was around about 19 years of age, I guess, and, 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 a, and a, a switch flicked. And I went from being, you know, a Christian, going to church, hanging out in youth group, just one of the guys, to being a guy who was on fire for Jesus. And it's never stopped. And you have that opportunity as well. Take the time. Secondly, take godly advice. <clears throat> I hear many Christians say, I love God, but I just hate church. And, and I understand that, because church can be dull, Church can be overwhelming. Church can be a whole bunch of things. But if you don't go to church and connect in, you don't get in touch with godly advice because godly people tend to hang out in church. So coming to church, sermons, fellowship, they're, they're all great opportunities for you to receive godly advice, to take godly advice to help you in your spiritual walk. Proverbs 19 says this, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Deb mentioned it before. Gain wisdom. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that will stand. If you want to get wisdom, if you want to take off, you need advice. And not just any advice. If you just want advice per se, go to Facebook. There's tons of it out there. Go down the pub with your mates. They'll give you advice on all sorts of things. You know, opinions are like noses. Everyone has one and most of them smell. And you don't need that stuff. What you need is godly advice. And it's only found in the Word of God and in people who cherish the Word of God. Because if you hang out with the right... That's why this church is exploding right now. Because we're all pulling together and we love God and we're, share, we're pooling our advice. We're, we're caring for one another. But if you want to fly with the eagles, stop hanging out with the turkeys. And I, I usually say that for Christmas time, but it's true right, right the way across. You know, if you want to fly with the eagles, you've got to take, uh, take the right advice. The third thing is to take stock. Now, at the start of a year, it's a great time to stop and just take stock of what the Lord has given you. Look around at your life. Do you feel blessed? Because as I read stuff online and stuff from Australians, we whinge about everything. I'm sorry, we do, don't we? Many of us. I was reading, Fiona was uh, showing me something, uh, th there was this guy that she was, uh, she showed me about on Facebook yesterday, this guy was giving something away, and people say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll have that, what, what was it, a microwave or something, or give me a microwave away, yeah, someone says, yeah, I have that, hey, listen, could you deliver it to me, because I can't get out there to pick it up, like, huh? <laughs> we are so ungrateful, we're the most privileged society going. The greatest sin of the Western world is an ungrateful spirit. And this, this cannot be us. Have a look at your life right now. Look at your family. Look at your talents, your job, your house, your car, your health, your church. Even if it's not a 100% top grade, it's way better, way better than being in a slum in Mumbai. We've got to be thankful. People are so entitled these days, but we need to be thankful. God has blessed you. <clears throat> with so much and right now is a great time to stop at the start of the year take stock and realize how blessed you are what's the old song say count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what god has done and it will surprise you what the lord has done 
count your blessings. Psalm 103 says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Back on eagles again. To begin to take off like an eagle, it's time to take stock and give thanks for the many blessings God has given us. And take joy in him because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. The fourth thing you can take is to take a stand. Because there is so much in this world and in this nation that is so ungodly. So many decisions that society makes for us. And sadly, many of us are, are like Lot. Remember, Lot chose to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah because the land looked better there. And next thing you know, he's involved in the city. And you see, he condoned all the things those guys were doing by not saying anything. His silence is what condoned what they were doing. Here's a verse for Christians in 2023, Romans 1, verse 32. Now, if you know Romans 1, it outlines all of the sin that, that God disapproves of. And it gets to the very last verse of Romans 1. This is fascinating. We should pay attention to this, folks. It says this, Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval for those who practice them. That is our society. And sadly, that is the church in 2023. If they're not out and out doing it, they are giving approval to it by not saying anything and just letting it slide through. Because if we say anything, we might get attacked and we wouldn't want that. It's time, folks, for us to make a stand. We know that abortion is murder and we say nothing. We know God's opinion on sexual issues and we remain silent. And some of us even get so confused that we start to sing the mantra of the world because we can't figure it out in our heads. It's time for us to make a stand. If God doesn't judge Australia, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because we are living in a sinful nation. Modern Christians, if they don't practice these evils themselves, they give approval to those who do. You see, we say, well, it's all right, I'm not doing it. Yeah, but you, you're, you're approving it. We've got whole denominations that are approving stuff that is counter to Scripture and counter to God's Word. Ephesians 6 says this, and I love this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armour of God. There you go, you just wrote a song on that. <laughs> Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, and against the government and the ABC and all the other stuff that's out. That's who we're wrestling with, the spiritual forces behind it. We must take a stand against the forces of evil and shine for Christ, regardless of what the world says. We must not... If we want to take off for God, we must not give approval by our silence. 1 Corinthians 16 says this, Be watchful, stand firm in faith, act like men and be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. So taking off for the Lord in this year requires backbone instead of wishbone. It requires us to take a stand on issues of righteousness regardless of the attacks. Because Jesus said in Matthew 10, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. We need to fear God, folks, not the media. We need to fear God and not the government. I'm not saying, I'm not inciting rebellion. I'm just saying we must make a stand on these issues if we're going to make any difference in our nation at all. Because Australia's opinion of the church is that they just float along that they're an old, outdated, outmoded system that, that, that some people just hang on to and they float along and they just approve everything. But the fifth thing that we can take is to take heart. See, when we stand against the forces of evil, we will be attacked. The ultimate sin, do you know, the ultimate sin in Australia is not murder, it's not adultery, it's not stealing, it's disagreeing with the media. That's the ultimate sin in our country. That's, the, that's what they can't stand. If you disagree with the media or the government, 
So you can be an adulterer and the world calls you having an affair. And it's okay. You can be a murderer and the world blames your upbringing. But heaven help you if you criticize homosexuality because that's going against what the media says and they will take you to the cleaners. I believe it's time that, to take heart because these attacks will come. But we have to take courage to stand for what is right and wait for God to sort it. Psalm 31, be strong, let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, wait for the Lord, be strong, take, uh, let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. It's time for courage in 2023, isn't it? It's time for us to stand up and say enough. But to take heart. Because when the attacks, if you stand for Christ, it takes courage. But you can take heart because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have a world out there that is going to hell in a handbasket. And we say nothing. That's got to stop. The sixth thing is we need to take a chance. The next thing it will take for you to take off is, is to actually take a chance. They did a survey among nursing home um, uh, residents. They said, if you look back on your long life, if you could change one thing, what would it be? And the overwhelming reply was, I would take more chances. See, great things never come from comfort zones. I'd rather have an oops than a what if, you know? And yeah, you might fall on your face, but please take a chance. If you've got people around you to help you up, take a chance. Ecclesiastes 11.6 says, In the morning sow your seed, at the evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper. This or that or whether both alike will be good. We don't know what is going <laughs> to make a difference in our world. We just have to keep serving the Lord and take a chance. You don't know the opportunities. You don't know what God has destined for you unless you step out and take a chance. Now, I know it's scary, but that's what faith is about. Timothy was a young man and he was scared. And Paul wrote to him, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind. He might as well have said, Timothy, step out, dude. Take a chance. Decide in your heart, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a chance. This church is in the heart of this community. This church is here right now because our leadership took a chance. We were in a, a place out there at Wombai, which is, is now Lily House. And, and we had to take a chance. We had to step out and take a chance. And it involved hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we had to take a chance. And that's why we're here now. And the Lord is prospering us because we took a chance. If you just sit in your comfort zone, nothing ever happens. In a few short years, our church has grown. Our asset base has, has increased thousands of percent because we took a chance. As Moses said to Joshua in Deuteronomy 31, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. To take off with the Lord, you have to take a chance. But next, you have to take action because we can talk about this all day. But if you don't do anything, deciding to take a chance and actually doing something are two separate things. You need to take action. You need to step out in faith in this year. James 2 says this, So faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Now let's be clear. Salvation is not by works. Salvation is by faith. When you ask the Lord into your life, you are saved. It's by faith. It's by grace through faith. But you can demonstrate your faith by doing stuff. The things you do don't save you. It just demonstrates the fact that you were saved by faith. So there is a, there, you know, there is a spot here to do stuff. So what step is God asking you to take this year? If you look forward at the year, what is God asking of you? Talk is cheap. What are you going to do? Some will be paralyzed thinking that they can do nothing for God. But I believe there are opportunities abounding in this church and beyond. Look at Cassie. She stepped out. Now she's going to be, she's going to go back to school. Who'd have thought? <laughs> As a chaplain. Because she had a desire in her heart and she took a chance. And then she took action. She actually stepped out and did it. You know, pray, you know, 
Pray about, ask God, say, Lord, what can I do for you? There is so much around you can do. You can pray with our prayer teams. You can get on the street and share the gospel, as Kenny, Kenny shared. Get involved in some of the groups like uh, the men's and the women's that, uh, that Deb was talking about today. You can help out a kid's church or youth. I'm sure they wouldn't knock that back. You can help prepare food, repair things, have people over to dinner, give, sing, play, invite, invest. There's so much you can do to be involved. C.T. Studd was a famous cricketer in his day. He was a test cricketer. Very rich man, came from a well-to-do family, test cricketer. He walked away from it and went to China as a missionary. And he said this, Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. That's a great thought. To take off in 2023, you need to take a chance and a step of faith in the form of physical action. So give legs to your decision and step out and do something. Volunteer for something. Try something. What's the worst thing that can happen? You could do it badly. Who cares? Man, we've got the most tolerant people in the, in the world in this church. They will love you anyway. So take a chance. I want to attempt great things for God so outrageous that without God they are destined to fail. That's a little mantra I have for my life. I want to attempt great things for God that are so outrageous that if you took God out, it's destined to fail. And the, 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 the critical time is when you think you've sort of arrived and you've done some good and you say, well, I can stop now because I've done some good. And that's not true because we need to see it through to the end. Amen? So even now, we're, we're talking in Lily House. Lily House has been an incredible success over the last year or two. They own the property out there. It's completely transformed, ministering to girls every day. It's, it's an amazing ministry. But there is more. And God's laid on Fiona in my heart and Joe here as well. That there is more. God is about to do something amazing up there. Stay tuned. Because when not, if you're resting on your laurels, you're wearing them in the wrong spot. They should be on your head. Mark 10 says this. Jesus looked at him and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. All things are possible. Number eight, you should take off now. Whatever you've done in the past, good or bad, is, it's finished. Whatever you hope and dream for has not yet happened. We only have today. That's why it's called the present, because it's God's present to you. Forget about what happened in the past. All the things that you desire to happen in the future, you've got to do something in the present. 2 Timothy 4 says this. Uh, Paul writes this, looking back on his life. Now, this is the last book he wrote before he was executed. He was in prison. He was facing the, uh, the, the sword. If you go to Rome, the, you, you can t they've got statues everywhere. And they have a statue of, you know it's Peter because he has keys in his hand. And you know it's Paul because he has a sword in his hand because that's how he was executed. He writes this in the last book he ever wrote, right towards the end of it. I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure has come. But then he writes this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Whatever your season in life whether spring, summer, autumn, or winter, are you finishing strongly? If you were to die tonight, can you look back and say, hey, I finished the race. I did what God appointed for me to do. I believe right now is a great moment, a great time to, to take a moment, take godly advice, take stock, take joy, take a stand, take heart, take a chance, and take a step of faith. And I would like you to join me in this endeavor. I believe that right now is our opportunity collectively as a church and as individuals to take flight. I love looking at eagles because they illustrate to me what God has destined for you and I. That we're not supposed to be kicking around in the dust, but we're supposed to spread our wings and fly. Isaiah 40, have you not known? Have you not heard the Lord? is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Then it says this, Even youths shall fail and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Isn't that what you want for your life? That's what I want for my life. I want to mount up on wings like eagles. I want to spread my wings and feel the Holy Spirit get under my wings and lift me higher into the stratosphere for what God has destined for me and for you and for our church and our community. This is our moment, folks. There is no time like the present. If you wait a year, that's another year that flows through your fingers. But if we act now, if we say, Lord, I'm spreading my wings and I'm trusting you to get under and lift me up, then our destiny is for the skies. And they're going to bring you down. They're going to attack you. But when those little birds flutter around an eagle, he doesn't fight back. He just goes higher and higher and higher until those little birds can't breathe anymore and they all drop away because he's flown higher and higher. That's our destiny. Isn't that incredible? We sang that song, Eagle's Wings, before. That's our destiny. I believe God wants us to fly with the eagles this year. I know some of you might be tired. Some might be scared. Some of you might feel unworthy. Some might be just too lazy to take off. I don't know. But God calls every single one of us to rise on eagles' wings. It takes strength and commitment, but the rewards are eternal. And I guarantee you that once you put the effort in to start, you flap a couple of times, but then, then the Holy Spirit gets under those wings and lifts you up. That's our destiny. Is anyone with me? Why don't you bow your heads and pray? I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning. I'm not going to call people to the front this morning. This is between you and God. But this is a pivotal moment because I believe that God is speaking to our hearts this morning and he's saying it's time to mount up on eagles' wings. Those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. But there is a cost. We've gone through all the costs and we talked about it today. It's hard to stand for Christ in this, in this nation, in this community at this moment. But I believe we must because I believe our destiny is to mount up on wings like eagles and to fly. So I'm going to ask you right now to take a few moments to quieten your heart, to search your heart, and to ask God, what do I need to do to fly? And if that is your destiny, which I believe it is, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And together, we are going to mount up and make a difference in this nation. Because we can soar above all of the pressures and the hassles and the sin and the dirt and the muck of this world. We can rise up on wings like eagles. So if you are willing to do anything, to pay any price to do this, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. And together, we're going to rise on wings of eagles. So say this with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I turn away from my sin and I turn to you. Forgive me for lounging in the dust. Forgive me for failing to look up. But on this day, Lord God, I choose to lift my eyes to the skies. I choose to spread my wings. And I commit to living wholeheartedly for you. I commit to loving you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I commit to following you into the stratosphere as we reach our community for Christ. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you mean it, just where you are, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of us because I truly mean this. I want this year to be different. Just wherever you are, just stand up. Just stay in an attitude of prayer. Lord, you see those standing before you. Lord, we, we are committed, Lord God. We are committed to rising up on wings of eagles. 
We're committed to taking the chance, to stepping out and to taking action, Lord God, and to being a part of what you're doing here as we stand for you, as we reach for the skies. Lord, we commit our lives to you afresh and say, use us.